One idea that I cannot stress enough is that when someone such as myself claims that they are being covertly drugged, it would take a fool not to believe them. There's no reason to lie about that. And that's the type of thing that you would have to be fucking crazy to mistake. You have ditzy, groupy sluts in high school that know when they're covertly drugged one time. So imagine over years. Before Fred Hampton could talk about his story, he was taken out. They drugged the Kool-Aid. They drugged um, Fred Hampton. So when you look at what are the philosophies that allow for this, well, it goes back to Neoplatonism, uh, Plotinus, okay, perennial philosophies that were derived from Neoplatonism, which was popular in the third century. Um, talking about Greece and where they had the people they had contact with. And so when you go back to the sixth century BC, you know. You had the pedophilia in Athens, and all this stuff comes together when you look at their philosophies, such as the Theosophical Society's philosophy of universalism. It all goes back to the oneness. You know, they talk about the single metaphysical truth or origin, what they have in common. And they don't, they don't believe, the Neoplatonists don't believe um, in evil. It's simply the absence of good. And they believe you can find perfection in this world. So Platonus, you know, was basically a Greco-Egyptian type, and his teacher, Ammonius Saccus, uh, is said to perhaps have been influenced in, uh, by Indian thought. So they talk about Hinduism and Vindata philosophies. So when you look at this thing, you get your caste system. You have your, you know shades of good and evil and the the lack of acknowledging evil the lack of admitting that man is imperfect and you can't find perfection and a lot of these people are into mysticism and ecstasy as a means to connect to God and so you know we by the time you get to the 30s and, and Germany and you have Wilhelm uh, Reich Okay, and the sexual revolution, and I, you know, you can't talk about this enough because all these things carried on. There's a continuity that cannot be denied, it is incontrovertible. A historian would have to be out of his mind to say otherwise. So, you see that what seems to be being defined as mainstream Western culture here is a mix of you know, Eurasian mysticism. You know, pagan thought, Satanism, pseudoscientific thought, universalism. You know, there's a lot of theosophical philosophies here. And even when you look at Jordan Maxwell, who credits Madame Blatsky, uh, you know, for a lot of his knowledge and understanding of the New World Order and, you know, mysticism. You know, she was a Russian mystic. You see that these people, you know, got together you know, as corporate elitists and with their think tanks in college that study these things thoroughly, you know, philosophy, you know, history, anthropology, uh, you know, the social Darwinists, the biodemographists, and they said, okay, we're going to unite under this, this culture, these ideas, these commonalities. That's why they're being pushed. They want everyone to accept it and want people to look at each other through the lens of someone who has been conditioned with these ideas and cultural values uh, to then judge you with that lens. And so whether it is Reich or Dr. Mengele, you know, Freud selling cocaine, you have a long history of really irresponsible uh, behavior. And when they did a study of psychologists, you know, not too long ago, 
they found that 40% of them admit to having narcissistic characteristics. And that's just what they admit. So, you know, you really see a, a pseudoscientific field under the pretense of science uh, for the betterment and for the progress of humanity, um, you know, being run and filled with irresponsible, you know, childish, really juvenile behavior, having uh, ill-informed, misinformed, misdirected adults who think like, you know, the sheep in cults, um, you know, recommending people to be drugged if they don't agree with their you know, really sick, you know, pedophilic, uh, you know, cultural ideas and agenda. So basically to summarize, over the years, philosophers have been at odds with religious people and they started a secret society, one after the other, to combat organized religion and to give them the upper hand as they operate the same way that the communists did. You know, guerrillas by night instead of soldiers by day. And the philosophers and their allies and the enemies of the church basically were invested in heavily by the internationalists, some of which were Jews, some of them were pagans, some of them had their own, you know, problems with the church.